Well, I guess um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. We'll take questions um, at the end, I think is what Stacy was saying in the Q&A tab. So please feel free to jump in there at any point when you think of a question. Um, but um, I'll go ahead and introduce our panel. Um, today we are doing a, a presentation on Vireo. Um, it's titled Streamlining Connections Among Students, Graduate Schools, Libraries, and Beyond. Vireo users share their experiences. Um, and my name is Emily Wuchner. I am with the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and I am joined by Lindsay Ford from the University of Houston Clear Lake Library, and also Karen Manning and Fred Rasco from Georgia Tech Library. Um, and we're gonna talk to you a little bit about what Vireo is and how it's helped us um, help students and help departments better. So just a little background about Vireo. Vireo is an open source software that was developed by the Texas Digital Library in collaboration with Texas A&M and other TDL members and Vireo users. And um, the idea behind Vireo is that students submit their thesis through Vireo's platform the university library or graduate college, whoever does those reviews of the thesis can do it right there. Um, and then when the thesis is done, um, you can push it forward to the library. Um, the library can upload it into um, the inter um, the repository, institutional repository, and then also pass it on to ProQuest. So it's a really a one-stop shop um, for working with students on their thesis and dissertation. It has um, been very useful for all of us, and we're so excited to show you and tell you a little bit about some of the ways that we use Vireo. Um, Vireo was released in 2010, and most recently we released Vireo 4. Uh, Vireo 4 is... Um, very, it has a lot of new bells and whistles, a lot of new enhancements to make this process so much easier um, for students and staff alike. Um, Vireo is used um, in dozens of universities and in the US and internationally. Vireo is open source and so since it's, it's there, people can go, anybody can go and download it. So it's really hard to tell how many exact people are using Vireo um, and where they are. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, it's so accessible to, to whoever wants to download a copy and, and implement that at their university. And another really interesting feature is that uh, Vireo users get to give input on any of the new features and enhancements that the TDL and um, programming team make to Vireo. So it's it's a, little, a very big shared experience. We all share what we do, how we do it um, with each other, and we give input on making things better um, and how to improve these experiences based on the things that we've learned or things that we've seen other people doing. Um, one of the things, you know, I mentioned that Vireo is used by so many people and um, it's hard to know exactly how many people. One of the new initiatives that TDL is doing is they're launching what's called um, Vireo Stories. And so I thought it was very fitting to use that as, as our segue into um, our presentation. And we're gonna share, you our, share with you our Vireo Stories. So I'll start at the University of Illinois. We have around 20,000 graduate students. This is a lot. Um, this is a, a very big number that, you know, we were at 17,000 last year, we're at 20 this year. Not all of them are going to write a thesis or a dissertation, so I will not be reviewing all 20,000 of them. Um, we began using Vireo in 2010, and we really eased into it in that we had just a couple of departments try it as kind of like a pilot, see what they think, test the waters, and we ended up adopting it fully. Um, um, in 2010. Um, we are still using Vireo 2, though we're upgrading to Vireo 3 very soon, and then to Vireo 4, so we have a lot of catching up to do to get to Vireo 4, but we, um, as I'll talk about in a second, we our, our programming team built a lot of things for us to, to integrate in Vireo 2, which made our personal processes a lot easier. We deposit around 1,300 theses or dissertations each semester, and the way it works is that, you know, the student submits to the graduate college, we can communicate with the student through Vireo to let them know if there are any 
revisions they need or if we're missing any materials from them, student can upload it right into Vireo. When we're done and we've cleaned up all of the deposits, we go ahead and push them to the library. The library does all of their metadata checks and uploads it into the institutional repository. And then the library is able to send it to all the documents to ProQuest straight from Vireo. Some of the things that have really helped us is that Vireo keeps all of our information in one place. We are looking at all sorts of things um, in the student's document. We're looking to make sure their name is spelled correctly. Their name is what they think their name is. You know that they are in the program that they think they're in because we, we all know these things sometimes happen. <laughs> um, and so Vireo is for us is linked to the Active Directory. So it pulls that information in for us so that we can verify that, yep, that's that how that student spells their name. That's the program that they think they're in and if there are problems we can get those sorted before we go through with the, the final deposit. We keep reviewer notes and feedback in there. This is particularly helpful because there are other people that help me in the thesis office. So if I have something that I've observed about a student, I can jot that down there and somebody else like Derek or Mike can see that note and then be able to act on it. Um, students can also upload their supplemental files, license agreements, copyright letters. So it really is the one-stop shop uh, for our students. Um, so many fewer, you know, technologies to have to juggle during a process that's very stressful and very challenging. It's easy for our students to use. The interface is very easy, very accessible. Um, our departments also find it very easy and useful to use. Um, and our, on the, the administrative side of Vireo, it is also very, very easy to, to know what to do to, to get done what you need to do. There are also some things that are helpful in that we can make small changes. It's user friendly for me as someone who isn't a programmer and doesn't know a lot of, you know, the technical terms and things. I can make small changes that I need to make without asking a programmer or asking someone else to make those fixes. So for example, if there are certain um, terms that you're your university uses, so research director or director of research or advisor, whatever that is, you can customize that in Vireo and it saves a lot of confusion for students later on. I'm going to go ahead and pass forward the mic to Lindsay, who's going to talk a little bit about how um, University of Houston um, works with Vireo. Oh, hello. Um, Okay, so I guess I'll start as well with a little bit about our university. Uh, well, I, okay. <laughs> um, we're much smaller in the scale of things, I guess, than my, my, my colleagues today. Um, we have um, university-wide approximately 9,400 students, um, and about a quarter of those are graduate students. Um, we began using Vireo. Uh, we had uh, initiated our pilot program in 2015 with our relatively new doctoral program at the time in education. Um, and then in 2016, all of the theses and dissertation became electronic and we've used Vireo since then. Um, since uh, its inception, we've had uh, 240 submissions, um, which averages about 35 semester uh, uh, submissions per semester, which is slowly growing each semester, um, but it's still a much uh, more manageable. Uh, which is uh, helpful. Uh, you don't need to go on yet. I didn't. I was just going to talk for a second. Um, at our university, so basically the library oversees um, all of the ETDs, uh, including dissertations, theses, and master's level projects. Um, it's basically me and one other librarian. Um, we handle all aspects of the process. I primarily work with the doctoral students, while uh, another librarian uh, works with uh, theses and projects. Um, we work with the deans to set deadlines to ensure the requirements that they make on their faculty and the chairs of the committees um, and, and the documentation they provide to their students is in line with our workflow. Um, and we also work with advising to make sure they've done that part of it uh, to meet uh, all the other requirements for graduation that's required for publication. Um, but other than that, we handle little, like, everything else um, from providing the, for we uh, provide uh, format templates um, we work and we work with students uh, on their formats. We require them have consultations with us and we kind of go over things uh, with them. 
Um, we also approve the final submissions, and then we publish uh, the approved theses and dissertations to our repository. Um, and kind of how Virio has helped us. Now the next slide. Um, so I looked at it kind of from two different sides. Uh, first of all, from the student side, um, we the, the interface is very helpful to the process in general. It's user friendly. Um, this is kind of a, a screenshot of my sample uh, page that I show the students. Um, we we don't really get very many questions on okay, what do I do next? Because it's so it pretty. Uh, easily walks them through the process from the um, and we do provide a lot of support documentation and we go over them with these form uh, how to submit in the format checks um, but various features like the digital sticky notes and things like that that you know we can tell them in person but it helps I think be there right when they're um, filling out the fields so they know you know what they're doing um, they have a lot of other things going on at that time so these little things sometimes get forgotten um, the notifications, uh, so when they submit, they get the email that automatically lets them know that it was submitted. So there's no question as to, okay, well, did it go through or, you know, do I need to email to see what's going on? It's pretty clear from that perspective. Um, and it also notifies me too, which is helpful for me. So I don't forget, uh, so I know to go in and look at everything and finalize it. Um, uh, the corrections are easy to, uh, to do. I don't actually, I and mean, while well, I can, send them the notes about corrections in Vireo. I typically get, typically do it in an email, so it doesn't, it's just easier for me. Um, but when it comes time to upload them, it's very easy for them to go back into the submission, their submission and change that document out to where it's the, uh, the most recent modified version. Um, and in terms of the overall design, since this is geared specifically to ETDs, it, um, I think I find that extremely helpful because there aren't all these other features or different things that we have to ignore that kind of might make the process more clunky uh, or confusing. Um, at the end of all this, they just want to get it submitted and they don't want to have to <laughs> deal with all these extra things that they don't need and Vireo is really good with that too. Okay, now the next one. And this is kind of from the administrative side of it. <clears throat> Um, I like the fact that it helps me keep things uh, well organized, um, even though our, our volume isn't the same as some others. Um, it, you know, it can still, like if you, if they're all at different stages in the process and that sort of thing, it helps me know what's going on or helps me remember, um, you know, who I, what I need to do next. And if somebody has kind of forgotten what they're doing to prompt them along. Um, it also helps uh, to easily assign whoever it does have another part. Um, like we, uh, for example, we work with uh, advising, um, like I mentioned earlier, to, men to make sure that they did everything. And I may have approved their format, but we check with them to see, make sure everything else is done so we can publish it. And so I'll assign it to them. And then they let me know after they've approved it, then I know I can do my next step. And so that makes it, uh, streams streamlines it a little bit. And the same thing with cataloging, because I publish it, but then our cataloger goes and messes with some of the back end stuff to make sure that all that stuff is squared away. Um, and this kind of also goes in with the approvals. Um, like the chair has to uh, go in and make sure the document that they submitted was the one that they signed off on. And they also approve it if we have an embargo or anything, which we don't get a ton of those, but uh, to make sure if, there, if something is needed that they're able to, um, that they did the right thing. And so um, it's there, the email is generated to them and they can know, that, okay, they approve it. And then I know that they approved it. It just, it just handles everything. Uh, all of this stuff could potentially be kind of complicated and it just helps, helps sort of centralize that. Um, and in terms of publishing, uh, I publish it and then I let the catalog do the rest, but it's just, it's pretty straightforward in that sense. You know, I publish it and it goes into our, our base based on that. So, um, okay. That's, that's, that's in a, in a nutshell, how it works for us and, and how we think it is very, very helpful. So we'll pass it to, uh, Karen and Fred next. Okay. Hey, so um, I'm Fred Rasco, scholarly communication librarian at Georgia Tech. Um, Georgia Tech has uh, 20,000 grad students like Illinois, but uh, about uh, 14,000 or so of them are in the online only like master's programs. And they're definitely not going to write uh, 
a thesis or, or a dissertation. Uh, so of the remaining graduate students, not all of them necessarily with a dissertation either. Uh, so we end up uh, at Georgia Tech getting about 200 to 300 each semester. That's spring, summer, fall semester. So uh, those times we get about 200 to 300 uh, submissions into the graduate office. Um, Karen and I are both from the library side, uh, but we, we do work very closely with uh, the graduate side. And it goes back to 2004 um, when we uh, first started uh, accepting digital only uh, theses and dissertations. So at Georgia Tech, it's been a uh, digital only uh, submission since 2004. And we initially used a uh, deposit software um, that was originally developed at Virginia Tech, which required like some uh, customized coding and some other technical um, uh, wizardry to get from the deposited um, uh, record into our repository, which is called Smart Tech. Uh, so Vireo has definitely helped uh, streamline that uh, one place to deposit, and that place uh, can sort of deposit into our rep repository seamlessly. We started with Vireo uh, version two. We upgraded to three in 2015. Uh, Karen will talk a little bit later about um, uh, ver version four in our future. Um, and we also use Vireo for And so, uh, Karen, I'll let you take the next. <laughs> Successes with Vireo. So we were following Vireo in its development stage, and we were anxious about transitioning to it. And once our developers, you know, who were also excited about it, we implemented it and have been happy with it ever since. So what we've found is that Georgia Tech using Vireo as our ETD submission system has proven to be an efficient method for students, the graduate office, and the library. It's been a smoother experience for students, whereas they used to have to create their own um, accounts and they had to do unique stuff and they were, you know, had to get approved. It was a back and forth sometimes with them, but now they're authenticated through our campus integration with the Vireo system. So if they're on campus, they can log in and they're already, they can easily access Vireo. If they're off campus, there's a, a VPN and still allows them easy access through their authentication. So we're happy with that integration. The user interface has provided a lot of simplicity for the students and us. They have easy and uncomplicated submissions. We're able to go in and provide notes in the system as managers to say, do this this way, do this that way, like customizing how we want them to format their stuff. So that's easy. They mostly follow directions, but you know, we're dealing with students. So, <laughs> but the, the notes, the customization where you can put your own notes and sticky notes is really, um, we're happy with that uh, feature. Um, and they can deposit, whereas one time the capability to deposit files was maybe 40 megs or something, but now they have the capability of depositing multiple large files in different types of files and formats. So we're happy that we're able to also do that because we also receive data. And so we wanna you know, use that data a certain way also. So we're happy that they're able to do that. Um, the, re the review process for the graduate office has been streamlined and so easy for them. They, the students used to submit and get no notification of anything. Now the graduate office is able, well, the Vireo system automatically sends notification of the submission. It allows the graduate um, office to track changes, to you know see the status of the submission, to customize an email template, the flexibility of being able to include the invite the advisors and you know others on the process as they're watching and reviewing it, and then finally approve them for um, submission into the repository. There's also a great feature, the filtering tools that we find has been wonderful because for us the library and the graduate office, we need those tools to 
figure out which ones are ready for deposit or, you know, have been approved or whatever status embargo, all of the features that, you know, allows us to track what it is before we deposit it into the um, repository. So for us, the integration has been wonderful. We, like I said, found those filtering tools great because when it's time to just approve or publish that semester's um, theses and dissertations, we're able to just filter and find them and, and um, send them through a sort transfer package into our repository. So it's quick access to the content and it's quite useful for locating and up dating those approved theses and dissertation. So basically that's, um, it's been a really seamless for us. We've had a few issues previously, but it's been a while where the sort deposit broke and we figured it out. Our developers figured out, you know, it's usually some file or something that's causing the issue within um, Vireo. And we haven't really had too many more issues with that. So from submission to depositing into the institutional repository, the graduate office and library are very happy with Vireo and its ease of use and have developed a great working relationship. And now I'll pass it back to Fred. <laughs> That kind of a presentation volleyball going. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna, just going to uh, you know, reiterate a, a few of those things, uh, uh, go into a little more detail about the, the process. I've, uh, it, it, it's not clear every thesis and dissertation at Georgia Tech goes through this process, and every thesis and dissertation at Georgia Tech ends up in the repository. Um, and so all uh, Submissions go through the graduate office. It's one point for all students, and the graduate office, you know, controls, you know, through Vireo. Oh, correct. They say, you know, they. They. Uh, uh, Fred, we're oh. having a little trouble hearing you. You keep cutting out a little. Yeah. Oh, I am sorry. I hope it's not a network connection. Thing. Okay. Am I still breaking? Am I okay? Yeah, I I can take it. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Karen. Yes. We, basically, it's just a reiteration of some of the things. And now we were talking, the, I think one thing that he was trying to say, we no longer have to um, transfer out a PDF to paperwork to a third party vendor where now we have all of that embedded, the license agreements. We don't use any of that process anymore. And it makes the, um, we have openly accessible metadata that's free to share. So that's a wonderful thing to be able to have, you know, all of the metadata in one place and transfer it into another place. So um, anything else you want to add? Because I can move on to the next slide for it. Um, sorry. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I can move on to the next one. To, am I that? No worries. So to in our last um, part here, we wanted to talk about um, the current status of Vireo. For people who use Vireo, they know that they have a 4.0 version. Um, we are currently in the process of upgrading to Vireo 4. It's in progress. We decided to go with the, the Georgia Tech Library, Library has a service model that have um, adopted and it has paired our IT technologists with product owners and we consider Vireo as a product and other software platforms. So this required a great amount of time being devoted to developing and upgrading multiple platforms. So as such, we brought a vendor in to perform an upgrade from Vireo 3 to Vireo 4. That's our current status. Well, it's been a bit of a challenge and there's been some ob obstacles. Um, we had to get through the procurement process, which we wasn't, we didn't realize it would take so long. And maybe it was due to, you know, the pandemic and people just wasn't able to get a lot done, but that was unexpected. Um, we didn't realize all of the approval methods that we had to get for contract. Well, we are used to having contractors, but we were not used to it happening in this environment. So we were uh, had some unexpected some expectations that um, 
was not met. And then we didn't know all of the stuff that we had to submit for a contractor and that all of the approvals and permissions and restrictions. So we had to go through that whole process to get them clear to even do the work, which it, which took many months, way longer than what our uh, day of <laughs> the date of the project. So we haven't quite delayed by that. Um, we've had to have external dependencies, which is our old office of information technology. They have to be even things about a new website. You know, the remote, oh, by the way, our vendor is remote. And so working remotely with the vendor and having to give them access to all these systems and creating websites that have to be approved by OIT office, it was just stuff that was so unexpected. So even giving them um, access to create a stage version for us to work in before production has been a really long process. Knowledge and data transfers from our developers to them is still ongoing. Um, we thought we were going to have a certain amount of data migrations and customizations, and that has not happened. And so basically, we've been unable to meet that timeline. So we're restructuring our upgrade. We're still anxious to get it done, but we're, we step back a little bit so we can look at the whole process and maybe consider, you know, how much our in-house developers can do it. So if anyone who's thinking about using a third party, there's a lot of things you need to, you know, check check some boxes before you go into that uh, partnership. And that's the end of our presentation. Thank you, Karen and Fred um, and Lindsay. So we are happy to answer any questions that you have. But before we do that, I just wanted to let you know that we do have a users group meeting today um, from 445. Oh, is it? I don't know if it's actually 4.45 to 6.20. That sounds like a very long time. Um, but we, it's, it starts at 4.45, and um, we would love to see you there if you have questions for us um, or questions from some of our uh, TDL colleagues who are here, too. Um, we also have information online at this link that, that you can check out. Um, but are there any questions that anyone has for any of us? or anything, not even questions. If you want us to talk about something more, we can do that as well. Yes, I can. I can post that link in the chat. Ah. I wanted to add that the Texas, this is Karen, that I wanted to yeah. add that the Texas Digital Library Developers are wonderful. That Virio Users Group, the TDL developers, I have to give them, you know, great honors because they're doing a fabulous job with this um, software. They're very um, engaging with the community and they're very helpful and supportive of any issues. So, you know, although we're using a third party, we still, you know, uh, you know, reach out to to the developers so that they can also assist with this process. So kudos to the TDL Serial Users Group. Well, thank you again, Emily. And um, I think I had checked, I uh, didn't see any questions. Did anyone else have any questions for the group? I've been trying to copy and paste the link and put it in the chat and it's just not doing it. So I'm going to try to type it out. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long link with lots of numbers and things. I'm sorry, guys. No problem. I'll, I'll keep checking if we have any questions come up. Oh, Fred. <laughs> Can I pose a question? Yeah, yeah, and she for sure. Answer. So, I, you know, um, she mentioned in a chat about wanting to hear from our um, users outside of Texas. And we're, you know, we know that Texas is a consortium um, Vireo users, but we're also interested in knowing like, what type of customer they may be offered. Yeah, I mean, besides the part of the um, online, 
Karen, I'm really sorry. I think you're cutting out now, too. Maybe it's the Georgia thing. <laughs> it, how about now? Any better? Yes. I was just wondering from, you know, Courtney, for users outside of Texas, besides the online environment, Courtney, what are the types of support? Um, we have reached out. We may be outside um, users and as members. Have you thought about some sort of structure where the um, outside users can also join as members and get the same support? <clears throat> okay, everybody, I promise I didn't plant Karen here to ask that question. Um, can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, Texas Digital Library, um, two years ago, our governing board decided that we would begin allowing membership outside of Texas for so that we could host things like Vireo, because we host seven different open source platforms for different purposes for our consortium in Texas. And so we created an affiliate membership for anyone who would want to get our support um, for a service and become that kind of member. So yeah, we, we do offer it and we have two members outside of Texas now. Both of them are using open journal system, not Vireo yet. Um, we also haven't done a lot of work to really get the word out there that we're taking um, more folks because we've been so focused on the Vireo for migration. And I do want to say, especially to, to you and Fred, um, we know the Vireo 4 migration has been <laughs> very tricky. Uh, and it's none of ours are in production yet either in Texas. The 13 members here are not yet in production, but we're hoping that we'll have the first before the end of next month, which is very exciting. Um, so yeah, we have everything on the, the website. All of our prices are open. We're all transparent about that. Um, and but you know that we'll help us anyway. <laughs> Just stay in touch with us and come to the user group meeting on the fair. We'd love to see you both there. And Lindsay, I hope you're there. Emily, I know you'll be there because you kind of have to be. <laughs> um, if anyone had any other questions, go ahead and type those into the chat. I know right now I think we just have Courtney. Um, but she, she's really helpful at answering any of the questions you might have. And Courtney, I'm not sure how many of other folks might be having these connection problems as well. Yeah. Oh, did I sound, was that really broken up? No, no, you sounded great. Oh, okay. Okay. Is the VUG meeting going to be linked through the Hoffman? Oh, the Vireo's user group. Yeah, we'll have that breakout session to today yeah. through Hoppin. Yeah, so it, it'll be later on. Session 15, I think. So no, it will not be linked through the Hoppin event, um, but I think we, we're talking about maybe linking it here in the chat if possible. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think no, the, no, it'll be it'll be through Hopin. It's breakout um, 15. All right. Well, I think with our streaming issues and everything, we should probably go ahead and and shut the session down. Is there um, any other questions? If so, feel free to type those into the chat. I see Frank is here as well. Hi. Hello. Well, it looks like we don't we don't have any more questions and uh, oh wait, we have Emily. She she says uh, she will meet us at the breakout in 15. All right, well we'll, we'll we'll see everybody there. I appreciate everybody's understanding with the technical difficulties. We'll try to get that figured out and uh, see you soon in the breakout sessions. Thank you again. Uh,
Bye.